Next on the Broadway show, We Love a Parade, we're taking a walk with Michaela Diamond, one of the stars of the Broadway revival of Parade. Plus, we're about to go ham. We meet the stars of the Pulitzer Prize winning play, Fat Ham. And Tiger Beat, the Olivier Award winning Life of Pi, set sail on Broadway. You'll meet the star. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show. If you're looking for the inside scoop on Broadway's biggest shows, well, you've come to the right place. It's the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Welcome. Academy Award winner Jessica Chastain is back on Broadway in the incredible revival of A Doll's House. We caught up with the star's opening night. Well, it's so emotional for me. I was this girl that grew up in Northern California, and it was, it's my first love theater, you know? Um, and I used to record the Tonys on my VHS and, like, dream of, like... I never really thought that I would get to be on Broadway, but, like, I dreamed of being at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in their company, and, and I always imagined I would be doing theater and that's how my, what my career would be and that would be a dream come true. The memories of being the child and like, you know, imagining and dreaming and I used to get like American Theater Magazine. I might have been the only 12 year old or 11 year old who had the subscription to the American Theater Magazine in, you know, Sacramento, California. So it was, um, it was very special. Yeah, I mean, so many men have seen this show and they're like, I think I behave that way. And, and they didn't maybe realize that they just maybe shouldn't. <laughs> we live in a very patriarchal society from 3,000 years to five, well, how, from the beginning of time. And, and it's hard for us to unpack that because we don't even realize what we're doing. And when Nora, at the end of the play, played unbelievably by Jessica Chastain, realizes what's going on, it's a realization for all of us. We are all a part of a system that is perpetuating something that is completely unnecessary and really yeah. actually just random at times. Like, why are we doing these rules the way that we have to do these rules? So in a way, I think the play, I wish one day these words of like, this play is dated. I would wish one day Doll's House is dated. It's really a really complex psychological play. And what is very, very interesting about it is that if you really unpick every human interaction, there's always this sense that we always want to be approved of by the other person. And often the other person is trying to control us or try and kind of like keep us in a particular box or keep us, keep our behavior in a way that is palatable to them. And that's clearly what happens with Nora. You know, that she's really, you know, bending her behavior, but bending her, her approach to life to suit somebody else. And of what is so powerful about what Nora does is to say, no, I've had enough of that. I'm gonna go and find out who I really am, what I really believe in, what my tastes and opinions are as an individual person. And I think it's a very kind of difficult but inspiring lesson that we all need to walk out the door live in the world on our own terms, you know, try and become our own person. We often say that, don't we? Learn to become our own person and not constantly rely on someone else to validate us. Um, very difficult work, really challenging, but if we can all do that, then, and if we can take that away from the experience of the play, then all the better. Parade is back on Broadway, the revival starring Michaela Diamond and Tony Award winner Ben Platt is as timely as ever. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. Before Michaela Diamond wowed audiences on Broadway, she attended LaGuardia High School and was a theater enthusiast just like her fans. I took a stroll with her to Parade to find out more. Michaela, it's so good to see you. You too. We made it through a pandemic and you're back on Broadway. Everything's <laughs> fine with the world. We are going to walk through some iconic sort of spots for you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to start here. This is Fiorello H. LaGuardia. High School Long title. of Music and Art and Performing Arts. Not the airport. Or the Fame School. So that's <laughs> sure. not really a thing anymore, though. If you're Don't... not humble, <laughs> you call it the Fame School. Were there any like uh, iconic performing moments here for you? Um, what kind of started it, What, or at least got me my agent, which then got me my share audition, was Gypsy. I played Louise. And it was, I you know, heard. So you did fun. that here. Yeah. You stripped in this building. I stripped in that building. So you get cast as Louise in Gypsy, which is a great role. Yeah. She transforms. Arc for days. Total arc. Yeah. It ended up leading to getting a big gig. Yeah. That's amazing. Crazy. 
<laughs> hey, look, that's the New York Public Library, Library of the Performing Arts, and you, I believe, hung out in the theater on film and tape. It's a small little room on yeah. like the third floor or something, and you're like, you walk in and you're like, I've never seen TVs this small. <laughs> and you wear very large headphones. <laughs> yes. But you get to watch all these, you know, you get to watch the original bootlegs. What were like your go-to tapes? Do you think you really remember like digging into here? Hi, Fair Lady. Weird one. Funny girl. Which funny girl? What do you mean, which funny girl? The original funny girl? Of course. They have Barbara Streisand doing funny girl? They go back. And then, obviously, I watched Parade. I mean, that was a big one. Yeah, I, yeah. you know what I also watched here? Equus. Equus. Yeah, wow. on a Valentine's Day date. If you have a theater nerd as a partner and you haven't taken them on a date <laughs> here, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's so nerdy. So I want to hear about your mom and about how you came to New York City. You're really close to your mom. Very. Yeah. Yeah, she's my best friend. You came here when you were young. Tell me about it. Well, I did a community theater show with Kids Theater. I did Sound of Music. I played Marta with the parasol. And I loved it so much. And we went back and I was in seventh grade and about a month into my seventh grade, she said, do you want to just move? It is all, it's, it's just us. Wow. And I have no siblings and my parents were divorced. and. So we decided to move to New York. Were you we, excited? Was it like an uh, exciting, a scary? It was everything, because I could do more shows with you that same company. Performing. I just wanted to okay. keep doing it. How's your mom feel now, watching what's happening to you? Well, we still live together, and she still sleeps on a pull-out couch. She's thrilled. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. It's a really That's special. That's amazing. So you are really close. You, wow, you spend a lot of time. <laughs> we do. Wow. We were kind of ships passing in the night. We just got tickets for great for tonight. Hey. Amazing! <laughs> so exciting! Oh good, you I can't wait to see you there! So this is the Neil Simon Theater. That was the stage door where you made your Broadway debut. I, I like doors. I like attaching emotions to doors. For sure. And buildings. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a lot of emotions when you yeah. come by this building? I mean... Yeah, I like remember all the things. All like, the things. All the adrenaline, the lower back pain, everything in between. The sequins. When you were babe, yeah. you were, or uh, the young Cher. We had fun telling her story. It was, it was a dream. You get to play this woman, a real woman, every night. And you're with Ben Flat. I know you two worked on this a few years ago, just for a quick reading. So did you establish your Leo and Lucille chemistry back then? We did. Both of us, I think, loved one another and had just so much respect for, I don't know, each other just as people. And we're just cut from the same cloth. We're both like Jewish musical theater nerds. And it's been a real honor to do it with him and have a partner in crime and all of it. And it's so helpful when you're kind of being like thrust out into the big Broadway scene and yeah. to do it with someone is really nice. But suddenly loud as a mortar, there is hope. This is my there, face. There, there, there. She, do you stand here and just like sign playbills, or is this the spot? <laughs> yeah, it is the spot. Actually, that's the door. <laughs> I heard you say before the role of Lucille is like one of the great few handful of great roles for Jewish women in musical theater. But this this role and this story, it's so seeped in history, and we're learning that it's more timely than ever. It deals with anti-Semitism and racism. What is it like to dig into this? What's kind of beautiful is it deals with so much tragedy. And yet we, me and Ben, get to share this beautiful love story as the backdrop to all of it. And so it allows for us and the audience to feel so much hope. And a lot of people have asked me, like, how do you do a show so dark? But somehow our cast finds all the joy we could find within this story. It feels so important. Shakespeare just got invited to a cookout. It's a modern day retelling of Hamlet, and it's good. Pulitzer Prize winning good. But what exactly is Fat Ham? It's a black version of Hamlet. <laughs> it's a universal story. Even though it centers around um, uh, a black queer and, and uh, it's a, a, a black family in the South, it's still a universal story. The themes of Fat Ham are incredibly relatable, which is why we still do theater and why we still have Shakespeare to this day, like, people understand grief. 
they understand jealousy, they understand um, joy. And I think the thing that Fat Ham does so well is it taps into all of those things like heavy. So the play is hilarious until it is incredibly tragic. And then it's it, it's sad until it is just like so light and so joyous. And I think people really respond. It's, a, it's an emotional roller coaster, but I think people really respond to that. I love Shakespeare. I understand why he's so revered, but also there are poets and there are rappers and there are people in my life that I revere just as much and highly and wanting to understand how I could bring my blackness into a world that is so sometimes viewed as white or classist or British. And the fact that James has put Shakespeare and this black queer story together, it's everything for me. It marries, it, I mean, my DNA is literally on fire. It's everything that I've thought of as, as a theater kid. James is so brilliant. He took the bones of the play and really gave us a new outlook. He really like takes the play this way and then we go like this. Audiences are getting themselves into a good time. I mean, we extended so many times to the public. People came two times, three times, four times. It's a show that I'm still laughing in rehearsal, even though I know this place so well. So a guaranteed great time. They're gonna have a good time. They're gonna party. They're gonna dance in the aisles. They're gonna laugh. They might cry in that good way, you know, where you're like, oh my God, I feel so good. I wanna, you know, release a little bit. Um, yeah, I just want them to like find an escape hatch into joy. Life of Pi lands on Broadway. It's the quest for survival based on the best-selling novel. And the star of this brand new play is this week's Fresh Face. Hello, my name is Hirana Visegra, and I play Pi in Life of Pi. <laughs> I think this is one of the most special shows that I've ever been to. It's quite deep, you know, it's not just like a normal show. It's like philosophy and the reason for life and all of that. So I feel excited to bring it to America, you know? Yeah, and it's Broadway, baby! <laughs> the theater bug was not voluntary. The theater bug was a det detention program. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to a all boys school called Nalanda College um, in a in a very challenging neighborhood. I would say <laughs> there was a teacher called Lakshmi Hathpatuegava who came and she wanted to like bring English theatre to this all boys school. And everybody was like, no, please don't, please, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. So it was it was looked at as like the detention program. So one day I was caught doing a naughty thing in class, and my teacher was like, right, you're going to go do this. And never did she think that I would love it. I was like. Send me to detention! <laughs> I was supposed to be a doctor when the tsunami hit. A, a very close friend of mine got washed away and all, all her family. And then I remembered like going with her like picture, going to all these the camps that uh, and trying to like look for her. We couldn't find her, but we found out what happened. But when I got back to my mom's place, I remember just like sleeping on the floor with like my friends who had gone in for the search, looking up, going. Life can like end like that. And if life can end like that, I want to be doing something that I really, really, truly love. The next day I was like, I want to be an actor. <laughs> you know what I really love about New York? There's like a sense of like, I belong here. You know, their voices, the sound of their voice, the volume of their voice, <laughs> their expression, like everything feels like, okay, this is my space and I'm going to take it, I'm proud of it. And I really like that. I've got a lot, of, lot to learn from Americans because I sometimes get very shy. Yeah, the Olivier was really cool. <laughs> what I love most about it is what it did to my, like, my country. Like, people all, like, took that victory. Like, it was like a victory for each and one of them. It was amazing. I spoke a few words in Singhala uh, at that, in, in that speech, and it was, like, very heartfelt. But I never knew that it would reach every single person over there who had watched it. So I feel like I'm, like, representing, you know, my home as well. So it's quite, quite emotional. <laughs> I hope, like, when people come and watch this, I hope that it doesn't matter that I'm, I'm, I look different. I hope it actually just goes they connect to who I am and who Pi is. This is The Broadway Show, and we're back in just a few. I'm Michaela Diamond. And I'm Ben Platt. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The Broadway, Broadway Show. Broadway's biggest shows, Broadway's hottest tickets, they're all right here, along with Broadway's hottest stars. It's time to take a walk with a Broadway star. Let's send it out to Charlie Cooper. We're literally with the 
Mrs. Jackson as of five months ago. <laughs> Congratulations on just marriage, but then also this huge role to play mm -hmm. Katherine Jackson for um, MJ the Musical. Yes. What does it feel like to be walking to work right now? Literally. Liter literally every day, I'm in awe. Yeah. I am just always considering the fact that this was my dream yeah. from the time I was a little girl. And growing up, born and raised in the Bronx, mm -hmm. the fact that I get to see those beautiful lights in Times Square, which is one of my favorite places in New York. I get to see that every day. It is, it's surreal. That's one of my castmates. Oh Hi, my Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a beautiful example of it's really never too late. That's I know right. that you made your Broadway debut when you were in your 50s, which, 50. by the way, 50 where? Because you look incredible. Right here, my right left knee. Like yep, <laughs> 50, right in there. But that is just, just incredible to think about. Talk a little bit about that, because I know when a lot of the times when people get up there, I almost feel like the roles are typecasted mm -hmm. or it's a situation where you're limited. Right. How did, how did you use this, um, just this experience to work in your favor? Um, well, I, I've always, um, I've allowed fear to dictate a lot of my decisions in my life, which is why I am blossoming and blooming as I call it at 50 or in my 50s. In your prime. Let's talk about That's it. That's it, in 50 years young. Yep. Um, but I got to a point where I decided I didn't want to be afraid anymore. I ch literally choose bravery every day. Every moment that something that scares me is in my path, I choose bravery and I now go toward the things that scare me. Catherine has always been such a revered person mm -hmm. in the Jackson family. Yes. Um, I imagine it's probably just such an honor to be playing that role Absolutely. as well. Um, Absolutely. Talk a little bit about what it means to you in this moment. Ooh, um, well, we know that Catherine Jackson is one of the most iconic matriarchs in our history. Yeah. So that alone is huge. I'd like to say there's a duality within Catherine, as I think that is with all of us as human beings. Nice. But she's a really beautiful mixture of softness and strength. So I try to approach the role with that. And I'd like to think that I am that as well. We're here. We're at work. We are here. So we're going to let you go <laughs> in and do your thing. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Such a pleasure as well. <laughs>that I thought we could finish with today is um, people know you as Neil Simon's producer, although you have produced many other things. But the first time that Neil asked you to produce a play. Robert Redford and I were friends and we played baseball together. Redford played first base and I played shortstop. He came into New York with Barefoot in the Park, Neil Simon's play, and there are only four people in that cast, so he called up and he said, would you play on our team? And I played shortstop and Neil Simon played second base and Robert Redford played first base. And we got to be teammates. And about four or five years later, the phone rang and he said, would you come over to the house? And I said, sure. He went into the house and he was standing there and said, how would you like to produce my plays? And he threw a script at me, and it was the Sunshine Boys. And it, it was a sad story. I, of course, walked home. I didn't touch the ground. This was Neil Simon. But the reality was is that Neil had just found out that his wife, Joan, was going to die. She had breast cancer that had metastasized. So whereas I was exhilarated 
and we did that, and we did the play, and it was successful. Uh, Joan Simon died a year later, and she came to her last opening. He's a man who had three, four, five hits on Broadway. Promises, promises in three plays, and me. But then, it, you know, we did 22 plays after that, so. That's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.